This is a basic demonstration of assembling an ECTD submission. This demo has been produced for RAPS using the Lorenz DocuBridge system. The first thing we're going to do is log on to this system by providing a username and password. Authentication is important as only authorized parties should be permitted to access submission content. Next, we will launch a brand new submission and we will specify the title of this submission. And let's select a submission template to work from. The system is now copying a blank submission template and creating a brand new submission from that. Now we'll start to assemble uh, the submission and first what we're going to do is enter the relevant submission metadata starting with module 1 administrative information. Some of the information has been pre-populated already in the template company name for instance. We'll enter the submission date. We'll enter the application number. The product name, the product type, the application type, the submission type, and the sequence number. Now let's move on to uh, other sections of the ECTD where metadata is required. And I will start with section 23S and I'll specify my substance and my manufacturer and I want to make sure to keep these values very short as they will become part of the file path. Now I'm going to specify the uh, product and dosage form in 23P as well as the manufacturer of my products. I'll move on to section 3.2 and again specifying my substance manufacturer and for drug product, again, my product name, dosage form, and manufacturer. Now for clinical information, I'm going to specify in 273, summary of clinical efficacy, the indication. And we'll just say this is um, type 2 diabetes. I'm going to use an abbreviation here of T2D. And I will go down to section 5351, or 535, pardon me, my controlled, uh, my reports of efficacy and safety studies, and enter T2D again in the metadata. Now we're ready to begin assembling content. Content can be assembled from either a file share or from an EDMS, an electronic document management system, which gives you much better control over your document lifecycle. We'll demonstrate both and I'm going to start by bringing in 273 summary of clinical efficacy. In this case I'm going to uh, bring this in from my uh, network drive and identify my document right here. Identify the location in the submission where I want it and I'm simply going to drag this over and drop it. The document will be registered in the system. And as you can see by the changing uh, coloration here. Now let's begin to assign content um, to my quality section in 3.2s and we'll just bring in one or two documents here and this time I'm going to bring them in from an EDMS as we see right here. I'll simply find my content, locate my content in the EDMS and I'll drag the content over and again drop it in. Notice um, for these pre-populated nodes that the leaf title has already been specified. In some cases um, you may want to change the leaf title if it's permitted. In this case it is. and I can change the leaf title right there. Okay, 
Let's move on and let's bring in some uh, a single document here as an example for section 3 to P1. Again, taking it from my EDMS. And populating it into my submission. Now let's move on and bring in some very simple content for module four. All of our reports for US submissions require what's known as study tagging file to be in the study tagging file format. So first I'm gonna make sure that I enter the relevant information for my study, including the study title, as well as the study ID. And now finally, I'm going to bring in um, a study report. In this case, I'm just going to bring in a sample document here. Each component here needs to receive what's known as a study tag, in this case, a legacy uh, preclinical study report. And again, I may wish to change the title here. So a very basic assembly of a study tagging file in module four. Moving on to module five, there's a bit more um, that's required in terms of the components. Again, just like in module four, the first thing we're going to do is fill out the necessary metadata. And in this case, I'm going to include the title. I'm gonna include the study ID. And now I'm going to begin to assemble the granular content. So first, I'll bring in my synopsis. Then my report body. And I'll bring in a, one or two examples of my appendices in 16.1. The template that I'm using to assemble this study tagging file has the structure already pre-populated so that as a publisher, I don't have to tag. Now let's move on and do uh, an example of case report forms. For the case report forms, we're required to specify the site um, for each case report form. Fortunately, I only need to specify that site one time. So I'll specify it now. And then I will go ahead and uh, locate some sample documents here for my case report forms. I'll bring in my first case report form, make sure that it's tagged appropriately. And now I can bring in the rest of my case report forms for that site. Simply dragging them uh, as siblings to the original case report forms. And they're going to receive both the appropriate study tag as well as the appropriate site identifier. Finally, we'll bring in some data sets. And as a publisher, you really do need to know uh, what type of data sets you're going to be using here. In this case, uh, I'm gonna choose some legacy data sets, data listing data sets. The first thing I'm gonna do is pre-populate with my define.pdf. And then I'll bring in the actual uh, SAS data sets themselves. Again, bringing in the first one to establish the file tag and then bringing in the rest of them. Finally, I'll need to bring in some content for module one. And I will first bring in a form, and we chose an IND, so we'll do our 1571 form. And I'll also bring in a cover letter. Now we're ready to go ahead and uh, publish our content.
So let's go to the Publish dialog box. And let's choose the format ECTD. I have several other formats that I can choose from, including paper um, and other electronic formats. But I'm going to create an ECTD submission. I'm going to specify the application name, and I'm going to go ahead and hit Publish. Now it says that the job has been submitted. The next step for us after we have our published output is to review it and validate it. Now that my submission is published, I'm able to look at the output of that submission and see that DocuBridge has produced a five module ECTD with an XML backbone, a US regional backbone, and backbones for each of my study reports. Let's go ahead and validate this submission. And to do so, I'm going to launch the Lorenz eValidator. And I'll select the application that I'm going to validate in this case. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to start my validation. The tool is going to run through and check against all of the rule sets in 2.1. And I see that everything in green means that it's passed. And then there are potential findings for low, medium, and high level errors. Uh, I see that in my summary here, I only have one category where there's low level findings. And if I scroll down, scroll down through all the rules, I see that there is a finding uh, against FDA rule 5025. US application form is not a fillable form. And I can establish here that my 1571 was not a fillable FDA form. So if I choose to correct that error, I would use a fillable form, assemble that, and republish my submission.